white nationalists despise the Iranians of today to such an extent that they deny the heritage of Iran and Iranians by claiming that modern Iranians are just Arabs and Turco-Mongols and that the ancient Iranians were Nordic Europeans and for this reason they seek to appropriate ancient Iranian civilization. This appropriation is not based on any genetic evidence and in this video which will be the first of a part of a series I will take a look at the true origins of the ancient Iranians from the Iron Age to today beginning with the ancient Central Asian Iranics and the objective of this series will be to prove that the Iranian genome has largely remained stable and even the ancient Iranians of Central Asia as well as the Iranian plateau were not genetically identical to contemporary or even ancient Europeans, particularly Nordic Europeans. Thus, the objective of this video and the upcoming videos will be to prove that while white nationalists may claim ancient Iranian history and civilization, the true heirs of this great culture and civilization are the contemporary Iranians. One of these white nationalists is Warg Vikernes and this is what this individual looks like and he does not resemble any ancient Iranian and for that matter what he resembles is a contemporary Scandinavian and for this reason his views should be disregarded by any Iranian nationalist and no white nationalist should trust him. In contrast to Warg's phenotype, here is what Shapur the first of Iran looked like and you can see a very Iranic phenotype and this great Shah does not resemble Warg or any other contemporary Northern European. Warg has often been refuted by Survive the Jive and here he is and this individual is a very commendable individual but even he in the past has claimed that the ancient Iranics of Central Asia were closer to Northern Europeans than they were to contemporary populations of the region and Iran but the truth is he is heavily misguided here and I will aim to refute these claims in this analysis though I reckon that after some discourse with me and him he has admitted that there is a likelihood that the Central Asia Asian Iranics of later periods, particularly the late Achaemenid period and onwards were closer to contemporary Iranians whereas the older Central Asians could have had more of a European genetic origin and phenotype. However, the greatest hater of today's Iranians is none other than Jason Raza Georgiani and this individual has claimed that Iran's heritage belongs to Europeans and that Europeans have a larger claim to ancient Iranian civilization as opposed to contemporary Iranians and this is not true and this individual should not be taken serious by any Iranian nationalist and no white nationalist should trust him either. Thus, the threat posed by Jason Raza Georgiani to Iranian nationalists is far greater than any other white nationalist, particularly both Warg Vikarni and Survive the Jive, as Georgiani has worked to sell Iran's heritage to Nordicists and Europeans, unfortunately. The reason why Nordicists and white nationalists as well as delusional Iranian nationalists claim that the ancient Iranians were largely a Nordic peoples and this heritage belongs to Europeans is because they believe that the peoples of the Sintashta and Andrano culture migrated to Central Asia and Iran without picking up any indigenous Iranian farmer ancestry from the Bactria Margiana archaeological complex or BMAC culture. In fact, the BMAC culture is better known as the Oxus civilization and the reason for this is because it was a very advanced culture and not only this, it was founded by the indigenous Iranian or Zagrosian population which originated in the Zagros mountains. In fact, as you will later see, the peoples of the BMAC culture or Oxus civilization hybridized with the incoming steppe pastoralists of the Andronovo culture to form the ancient Iranics who later migrated to Iran mixed with the indigenous Iranian population to form the Persians and the Medes. And here is a map of the Andronovo culture as well as the BMAC or Oxus civilization and you can see that after these two cultures had mixed and coalesced it led to the formation of the Yaz culture which is traditionally seen as the progenitor of ancient Iranic civilization. 
It is also worth emphasizing that the indigenous population of the Oxus culture or civilization was largely of indigenous Iranian farmer descent as mentioned and they achieved a lot. As you can see, this is the great fortress at Ghanar Depe and it had nothing to do with steppe pastoralists and was the creation of the indigenous Zagrosians of the region. Eventually, you can see from this map that the coalescing of the Aryans as well as the Andrano steppe pastoralists led to various cultures, but the most important of these was the Yazwan culture, which is also known as Sinis Sepulchro, which is very interesting, and this lasted from 1500 to 1000 BCE, and there are also other cultures present as well, including the Tazabagi Yab culture, the Chust culture, as well as the archaic Dahistan culture. Then all of these cultures were largely Iranic with the archaic Dastan and the Yaz cultures having more Bimak ancestry with the Tazabagi Yab and Chust culture having little to no Bimak ancestry. And this was at the very beginning of the formation of the Iranic or Aryan identity at the time. The hybridization between the steppe pastoralists and the indigenous BMAC farmers was confirmed in a January 2022 study which was titled Genetic Continuity of Indo-Iranian Speakers Since the Iron Age in Southern Central Asia. This study found that on average the ancient Aryans were 43% BMAC and 57% Andrano and this was based on a sample that was sequenced from the Yaz culture and what this sample suggested is that the ancient Aryans responsible for ancient Iranian civilization were indeed a hybridized population and not a purely Nordic European population such as were the previous steppe pastoralists of the Sintashta and Andronovo cultures. A previous July 2021 study also took a look at the same topic and this was titled Genetic Continuity of Bronze Age Ancestry with Increased Step Related Ancestry in Late Iron Age Uzbekistan and what was found was that despite the samples predominantly being of BMAC descent they nonetheless had significant ancestry from a step source and again this shows that there was mixing between the two populations but nonetheless the continuity remained from the Bronze Age and what this suggests is that these were just steppe populations which mixed and meshed into the indigenous Iranian population as opposed to outright replacement. Now I'd like to take a look at the genetic origins of the ancient Iranic populations of Central Asia and these are the source populations that I will be using through the Global 25 calculator. As you can see there's a Taza Bagi Yab source and that is the Uzbekistan Kokcha ancestry and then there is also the BMAC or Bactria Margiana archaeological complex source from the Bronze Age and that is from Bustan. There is also a Khumse early Bronze Age West Siberian hunter gathered source and finally there is a Havsgo late Bronze Age source from Mongolia. Here are the results for all of the averaged out samples and these are in chronological order from top to bottom and they are on average 54.8%. Tazabagi Ya Bronze Age 33.6% BMAC 10.1% Halves Gold Late Bronze Age and 1.5% Kumse Early Bronze Age. Thus, these results prove significant BMAC genetic influence on the genome of the ancient Iranics of Central Asia from the Bronze Age up through the Late Iron Age. For this reason, I call on white nationalists to accept the reality that the ancient Aryans of Central Asia were not a Nordic or European population but rather they had significant BMAC influence as well as minor amounts of East Asian ancestry. Here are the results for the earliest Iranic samples of Central Asia and you can see that both the date and the coverage is listed and there on average 58.3% Taza Bagia Bronze Age, 35.5% BMAC, 3.8% Havsgo Late Bronze Age and 2.5% Kumse Early Bronze Age. Thus, this should certainly be an eye-opener for those white nationalists who claim that the ancient Aryans were a white or European population and also for Jason Raza Georgiani who has continuously sold out Iran's heritage to European nationalists, unfortunately. Now by 300 BCE, you had the rise of other nomads such as the Wusun and these are also largely Iranic as they were 52.2% Taza Bagi Ab Bronze Age, 29.5% BMAC, 15.0% Havsgol Late Bronze Age and 3.3% Khumse Early Bronze Age.
Thus, the Wusun were indeed an ancient Iranic Central Asian tribe and the Bimak influence on their genome was significant. The Sakas were another ancient Iranic Central Asian tribe and they were on average 53.6% Tazabagiyab, 27.8% Havs Gold, 17.2% Bimak and 1.4% Khumse. Thus, the Sakas were also mostly an Iranic population. Despite this, however, they did have significant East Asian ancestry. Nonetheless, they also had significant BMAC ancestry alongside their Taza Bagiyab ancestry. Cushion samples from the 1st century BCE also have a very similar profile as they're on average 50% BMAC, 41.2% Taza Bagiyab and 8.8% Havs Gold, which is very interesting, though one of the samples I reckon had significant West Iranic ancestry as the BMAC is inflated, but the actual distances are very high. So I think that if I actually used an ancient Iranic source from the plateau, the BMAC figure would go down. Nonetheless, again, you can see significant BMAC ancestry. The second to last sample sets analyzed here are the Rabat and Sir Karakat Bactrian samples from Uzbekistan from the Iron Age. These samples are from the older study which was taken a look at early on in this analysis. The Bactrians from the Iron Age are on average 53.6%, BMAC 41.6%, Taza Bagiyab and 4.9% Havsgo Late Bronze Age. Thus, it has yet again been proven that white nationalists and delusional individuals such as Giordani are wrong when they claim ancient and medieval Central Asian history, particularly the history of the Sogdians, the Bactrians and other related groups, and especially the history of Rumi, who was likely a Bimakai's Duranic and not purely of European genetic descent. The last of the sample sets to be analyzed here are the Kongju samples as well as the closely related Otrar culture samples. They are on average 62% Taza Bagiyab, 27.6% BMAC and 10.4% Havs Gold Bronze Age. Thus, yet again, these results prove that white nationalists have no claim to ancient Iranian civilization or history and that Georgiani should seriously stop saying that the ancient Iranians were Nordic Europeans because this is not true and is not supported by any credible genetic evidence. Before I conclude, I just like to state that while we do not have any Median or Persian samples, nonetheless, I think these samples give us a good idea of the ancient Central Asian Iranics and I reckon that the Medians and the Persians would be far more admixed than these samples, particularly with the indigenous Iranian population. Nonetheless, for my next video in this series, I will present a more refined analysis of the genetic origins of contemporary Iranian populations. As you saw, the claims made by Nordicists that ancient Iranian civilization belongs to Europeans were disproven, particularly the claim that the ancient Iranians were largely of Nordic European genetic descent almost 100%, but the truth is they had significant BMAC ancestry which averaged just a little above 30, and that is significant for an Eastern Iranian or Central Asian Iranic population or populations. I would also like to call on delusional Iranian nationalists such as Jason Raza Georgiani who have sold out Iranian civilization to Europeans to rethink their opinions in light of the genetic evidence because it is very telling and it's the truth and it's time that all of you accepted this reality as your ilk are very delusional and again I am referring to the followers of Georgiani and Georgiani himself. Thus, Nordicist and white nationalist claims to Iran and Iranian civilization are not justified in light of the available genetic evidence. For those of you wondering, my history series has yet again been put on hold because I have a very busy schedule upcoming, but once I am through it, I will continue that series nonetheless. I hope that all of you enjoyed this video. I would like to thank all of you for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.